some people are saying, well, Ken Ham didn't really bring the fight to Bill Nye, or, or you, you didn't come out, you know, with both guns blazing or whatever. And, and what would you say to somebody who says that? Well, first of all, you know, when you look at First Peter 3.15, 3, it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone that asks you of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yeah. And I think as Christians, we need to show that we, we don't get angry at the non-Christians. I mean, when, when I think about Bill Nye, he made some very disparaging comments, but very demeaning comments as well, you know, yeah. and mocking Kentucky, the state yeah. of Kentucky, <laughs> and mocking Christians, and calling it Ken Ham's facility, and Ken Ham's flood, and things like that. But you know what? I wasn't going to get into that. I wasn't going to mm. going to lower the conversation to that level. I wanted to show him that I can be gracious as a Christian, and, you know, I'm not... I'm not intimidated by him, and I'm not angry at him and frustrated with him because I understand that you know he doesn't believe in God, and and he's lost, and he needs to hear the gospel, and so he needs to hear me do it in a way that's honoring to God and what God expects of me, and so that's what I did. You know, I I wanted to show that I was just going to be me and not in any way react emotionally to some of the statements and the attacks he was making. And the other thing is I wanted to stay on course, to stay on course with what we prepared to do and what I prayed about a lot. I knew that he was going to come off and go into all those different, you know, bits of evidences. In fact, you know, even the Secular Humanists just had a newsletter out as a fundraising letter for one of their organizations and saying that was a ploy that they told Bill Nye to come up with and just, you know, come up with this bit of evidence and that bit and this bit and that bit and that argument and so on. I wasn't going to drag into that. I was going to stick to what I had decided to do and that was to make it a philosophical worldview issue to define what science is, what it isn't, and to present the gospel because God gave me that platform and to present it in just a, a, a way in which people would uh, see that I in no way was you know, being intimidated by this evolutionist who was on stage there, but I really did believe God's word. And I think that's one of the reasons that I was able to come across that way, because you know, he, he didn't unsettle me in that sense with all the things he said, because I, I was so firm in what I believed and know that God's word is true and know that I can uh, defend my faith. It doesn't mean I got all the answers, uh, but I felt that that was important uh, for people to see that, which is why when I was asked the question, you know, what bit of evidence would you, you know, uh, cause you to change your mind? Uh, Bill and I, you know, started talking about, well, it have to be this or that. And I said, none, none. Because, you know, when it comes to the origins issue anyway, all evidence is interpreted. So there's, right. there's nothing out there that you can say, this is in the sense absolute proof that we can prove right now in that sense in regard to origin. So it's important to understand that philosophically. And also because God's word is truth, there is nothing that's going to contradict God's word. And so I wanted people to show that I was sure in what I believe, which I have.